Hey, dear Ditch family. Okay, I'm back, Dutch mama. And uh, today I want to do a little tutorial uh, about how to choose a new didgeridoo or your first didgeridoo. I want to do a little instruction, of course, also, but that a little bit in the middle of this video. Um, I have to uh, do uh, another letter, so I will do that next week. I promise I was uh, really into making this video instead of uh, drawing. Um, so like, subscribe of course, and um, yeah, maybe you've been playing for a while and you have bamboo didgeridoo and it's not really serving the purpose anymore. And you're ready to find a new didgeridoo. So what are the things you have to think about and uh, try and, and be conscious of? Um, or you're choos choosing your first didgeridoo. Indeed. I always say like a bamboo or plastic didgeridoo. Perfect. Um, not too long, not too short. Talking uh, bamboo, maybe a bit more than a meter. And a piece of PVC pipe about this... Uh, round um, in centimeters it's about three or four centimeters if you have four you have to put a little bit of beeswax or something to make it a little bit smaller because the mouthpiece video is about uh, 2.8 so three centimeters is good if you find a piece of four centimeters and then you have an extension that makes it into three Perfect. Uh, if you only have three, the base is not so clear. This is also with um, choosing your didgeridoo. You want a lot of base. You need something with a bigger diameter. What do you want? This is, of course, an important question. Do you want a traditional instrument? Um, do you want eucalyptus eaten now by termites made by uh, the traditional owners of Australia, like a yerdaki? No. I have two traditional instruments. Uh, these two, two top ones are um, Gerdakis. Um, and I was lucky to have uh, spent some time with Jalu and his family. The bottom one he gave me after um, the Garma festival where I participated on his masterclass. I will uh, post some photos of me uh, really young having um, the master class with uh, beautiful Jalu Gurre uh, He is a custodian of um, the, this, this beautiful instrument. So thank you, thank you. And uh, the top one is an instrument. A couple of years later, I went to visit him again. And um, I bought that one and I helped make both of them a little bit. So I know a little bit about instruments and what is important. Also I worked for 20 years in uh, Aboriginal Art and Instrument didgeridoo store in Amsterdam. So I came across many many instruments so let me help you find your new one or your first one. Okay so first of all you have the traditional instruments. Uh, it's supporting uh, the traditional owners which is of course very important. I think if you play this instrument, there are some disadvantages. It's heavy. It's not easy to come by. I will write some links where you can find uh, some uh, Yerdaki's traditional uh, instruments. Um, yeah, so that's a uh, disadvantage. The advantage is you help something good. Um, then you have eucalyptus eaten now by termites, but it's not really um, made in a traditional area or by Aboriginal um, First Nation people, mm. but it can be beautiful instruments. I have a couple um, here, so I will play something on it and um, explain something more about it. The um, advantage is um, it's eaten out by termites, and that makes it that it's very, uh, how can I say, it has character. It's a personality because these termites don't eat out a perfect hole. They, you know, a little bit more there. You, um, there's like little things happening there that are more out there. And it's like, it's not a nice round shape. It has little, I don't know how you call it. I will think of a word maybe, doesn't matter. But it's, um, it's not perfect, but 
it gives it character. So that's a, a plus. But a negative, it's not perfect. So it can also have that it's not so good eaten out. And if you have a good maker and uh, can work on it, then you can have an excellent instrument also. Um, so that is the eucalyptus, but you also have, of course, lots of other materials, um, other woods. Um, wood has a lot of different um, um, uh, qualities also, like if you have, um, uh, for instance, a light uh, wood with straight yes. grain. So uh, some are quite straight and some are like that. So the wood has different qualities. Also, when you put a sound wave through it, which you do when you buzz your lips, it will have different quality of maintaining it. Um, me personally, I like an instrument that is quite heavy, thick. Um, so the, the, the quality of the wood is heavy. Well, eucalyptus, most eucalyptus is very heavy. So this is good for, so I like eucalyptus. Um, but some people like other qualities, like bamboo is very straight and doesn't have a lot of uh, possibility of maintaining uh, the sound. So I remember um, when I was playing very loud, I could blow up the instrument, I could make it <coughs> split. Uh, so I'm not looking for that, but um, some people love the quality of eucalyptus and uh, might like some lighter wood. Also the quality of, you know, carrying an instrument and it's really heavy, you know, you might not like that. So this is also things you could think about. Um, so there's different qualities of wood, uh, different uh, weight of wood and um, so that's something to think about. Um, the other thing you can choose for maybe not wood, like carbon fiber or um, is it glass fiber? S some lighter material. Um, and maybe you go for other material like ceramics, clay or glass. You have those instruments nowadays also. Um, Check it out. For me, I love eucalyptus. I like uh, hardwood, so I can make uh, a lot of loudness without the instrument not being able to control it. So it's also if you have lighter, like for instance, you have a um, cardboard. You know, if you go, it's just like, I can do, I can't handle it. It's just gonna absorb the, the loudness. That's a little bit quickly about um, instruments. And um, somebody asked me if I have instruments for sale. I actually do. So um, uh, with these instruments, I will explain a little bit more. Let's go to my didgeridoo collection with you. Look at that. All right. So I placed them in price quality. So um, if you look, some are longer, some are shorter, and this also has effects. Uh, basically, the longer, the lower, the shorter, the higher. That is the principle of um, any wind instrument. If you have a longer pipe, it's lower, shorter, higher. Um, so this is my shortest instrument. It's an Alex Ditch uh, didgeridoo. It's a French maker. This is his logo. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful instrument. It's eucalyptus. He worked inside. It's quite um, all, all the little um, tunnels that I was talking about. The tunnels, hello. Um, it's what the, um, the um, termites make. He, uh, you worked on it a little bit to make it um, not so tunnely. Um, and yeah, he knows about balance. It's well balanced. If you put my hand here, the balance is here. So the balance means that it's um, not too, uh, one part is not much heavier. The thickness of the um, the wall is not completely different there than there. So he worked on that. 
he worked uh, to make the holes a little bit, the tunnels a little bit uh, less. Um, as you can see, perfect size mouthpiece. I like beeswax, so I put some beeswax on it, but it's actually not so necessary on this one. Uh, it doesn't have a huge mm -hmm. bell, the end of the didgeridoo we call bell. Um, so it's quite straight, like bamboo, but it has a little flare out slowly, conical shape, which means that it's louder. I will play it for you a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> So what I like about this instrument, it has beautiful harmonics, um, beautiful back pressure. This has to do with the height of the tone, of course, but also how um, it sort of is supported by the instrument. Um, because it's short, it's high. That's very clear to hear. Um, because it doesn't have a huge bell, it's not that loud, but it's not very soft either. Um, the, one of the qualities is that because it's not so long, the toot is quite high. So for me to play like five toots on this instrument, I can't do it or I have to practice a lot. So that's uh, one of the disadvantages. And yeah, if you like a loud didgeridoo, this is not your instrument. I uh, priced this instrument 250 euros because um, I actually used it and there's little tiny scratches on it, little bit of dirt, but it's not well uh, so much used. Put a piece of mouthpiece. So 250 euros. This is uh, a beautiful, beautiful Alex didgeridoo. Here we go. So here we got actually the same tone or very close to. It's a, a Melly didgeridoo. Melly is the didgeridoo brand of Aboriginal art and instruments. And this was uh, some years ago, like the top of top, 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 top line. It would be, you know, on that side. So it would be about uh, 900 euros. Um, uh, but because this, I use this a lot. And the tape is because it uh, has tiny, tiny cracks and has stripes and everything. And it really has use marks, but this is, this is one of my top instruments. But uh, being an old lady, it's heavy. So I'm looking for less heavy instruments. Um, it's much longer than the other one. And I said it almost has uh, the same tone. The nice thing about this instrument, well balanced again, is that um, basically the tone ends up, you know, making the tone is about here and this is just amplifier. So it makes it fuller, louder, and that's one of the qualities. Otherwise it has beautiful harmonics, everything, everything works amazing. Here you can see maybe like the tunnels a little bit. I need better light. Maybe see inside. Yeah, you can see uh, there's chisel marks at the end. So it's been worked uh, on a little bit uh, or a lot actually to make it so such a nice instrument. I put beeswax very used. I will clean it up if I sell it. Uh, 400 euros, so it's actually a super great price for an amazing instrument. But like I said, it's second hand, it's used, but it's been all over the world. Playing lots of concerts, you can see on YouTube many videos, me playing this instrument, because it's amazing. I just have a, a lighter version that I also like, but this is actually better. Okay, so sounds like... Thank <laughs> you.
three toots I didn't warm up or anything so easy toots amazing the easy and what I like is that it's balanced in the bass middle high it's balanced in the back pressure it's just gorgeous instrument so 400 euros let me know if you're interested and then I have uh, Little Dubravko instrument, also beautifully balanced. Um, this is, um, yeah, drilled out, so it's uh, uh, quite hard wood. He also loves hard wood. He's looking for the hardest woods in the world. Um, it's not as super, super hard, but it's hard. Um, nicely balanced. Doesn't have a huge bell, but bigger than that uh, other one. Um, actually, I have put beeswax on it but it came with a wooden mouthpiece so if you're interested and you don't want beeswax you can put this on back on um yeah so also beautiful balance I will play it for you here we go <laughs> instrument is just beautifully balanced um, it's a um, gorgeous, gorgeous instrument and it's uh, new so <laughs> just played it a couple of times uh, but uh, not much 500 euros I ask for this Dubravko Lapin of course amazing maker here we go then I have Tristan O'Mara did redo. Look at this, it's gorgeous. It's just so beautiful. Eucalyptus, eaten out, worked by Tristan. It's super long. Um, yeah, also it's quite not so used and there's one reason for it. Um, I was looking for concert pitch did redos. If I have a concert and I have to play a D, it needs to be spot on D or an E or whatever and this is in between so it's a quarter tone uh, and I don't dare to cut it it's just too beautiful to cut it um, yeah quite low it has completely different uh, quality so this is for somebody that doesn't need to have a perfect uh, note concert pitch but likes a low instrument as a, as a new instrument here we go <laughs> piece actually better for me like this has no uh, no um, beeswax on it So gorgeous uh, looking instrument, uh, special qualities, um, 
600 euros because it's also it's basically new not user marks uh tristan omera here's his uh Oopa. his logo just beautiful i think it's uh bloodwood eucalyptus gorgeous piece 600 euros all right here we go another french uh, didgeridoo builder i am complete fan also of this guy bertrand labourdette and here he was experimenting with uh, different kinds of wood just he just made this <laughs> amazing instrument just gorgeous all this so much love okay let me do it with like this then there's better light on this mouthpiece yeah so this is a perfect concert pit c and um i'm gonna sell this for him because uh yeah he has two kids and needs money um 650 euros only he uh, i think he's uh, super super affordable for the quality of instrument he has uh, played on this uh, instrument uh, during uh, my son's uh, cd and yeah beautiful uh, wooden mouthpiece everything nice and balanced here we go Also this, because it has a, a bigger uh, diameter, um, it's very good for all these uh, mouth uh, drum kind of thing. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful work. 650, used a little bit, um, and it's a perfect concert C. Do, a deer, a female deer. Okay, then. I have Poopa, you stay there. I have another Dubrovko Lapin. Here we go, you can see his logo. There it's very clear. Also very cute, beautiful. Drilled out piece of wood. Just all gorgeous, like we know from Dubravko. It's uh, higher than uh, most of his instruments, and it's just very cool for this mouth drum that I'm not so good at, but all these uh, beatbox kind of things. And just a nice balanced instrument. So if you want to play 
fast uh, and have this uh, beautiful instrument that can teach you whatever. 850. Completely new. Yeah, that's it. Dubrovka Lapin. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, let me see. I made some notes and they're here. So, okay. What are you thinking about? Is length, uh, the balance, like I said, beautiful balance. It's basically, I want to put my hands a little bit at um, the last part of the instrument. Woohoo, danger. Never put your instruments like this. Just hang them, put them on the floor, lay them down. <laughs> That's my advice <laughs> that I don't always take. Um, yeah, balanced. Um, also in the playing, you you want to try out the drone. I, you know, I'm selling these instruments, but uh, I personally would try the instrument before you buy. But now with Corona, it's a little bit difficult. Um, if you're in the neighborhood of Amsterdam, you want to come, we can. I will clean it properly. No problem. Okay, the drone. The drone needs to be easy. It has uh, to do with uh, the mouthpiece. Not too big, not too small. Uh, then the toot. I would try out how many toots you can do. Uh, is that easy? Uh, the drop octave. <sighs> is that possible if you want to get into that? Um, are the harmonics nice? Uh, are they coming out nice and clear? Oh, Bartje. Bartje has a difficult time. Come on, Bart. Bart, come. My dog. Uh, the voice. Does that feel right to you? And dynamics. And that's the, the thing I want to talk to you about in this tutorial. Dynamics. So, um, is it easy to play soft? Is it... Can the instrument um, maintain if you play loud? So soft, there's two ways in my book to play soft. I made a little drawing, it's just fun. So one way is um, the lip width. So if my lips are, normally I would play the lip width of making tone is about there. But I can try to make it smaller. So, um, now it's smaller and also it's less loud. So in the didgeridoo, I will play normal and I play softer. Um, and harder is uh, just getting the muscles for it, but to control this, it's difficult. Here we go. Uh, I will start actually with normal and then go to soft. <laughs> my normal. It's quite loud, but now I will try to make it less white. Very clear, less loud. Okay, so... And I was looking for the place where I can't maintain it, where it just pace away. Um, this is very good and then try to play, do all the things like cheeks, tongue, jaw. See, the jaw is difficult because you want to keep the lips together. But just play around with it, see if you can make circular breathing. See, I will, I'm losing it. If I made circular breathing, it becomes too loud. So it's a search of maintaining it. Now I'm starting to get it. So I'm starting to feel how much my tongue needs to move forward, my cheeks, uh, how much time I have to do it. So it's a new thing. Also, if you can't really relax in your circular breathing, you will blow up because it's, it takes such little air. Yeah, interesting to try. There's another way to make it and that's not making it less uh, white, but it's actually to have your lips quite far away from each other. It's like an F 
and then bringing your lips together. So it's... Uh, finding the, where the vibration starts and finding uh, the border where you can have the tone not too loud and not loose. Here we go. So I'll start with an F. Now you can hear my tone starting to come in. So F. So now it costs little air, it costs a lot of air. Um, so again, the, the, the tongue, the cheeks, everything needs to work in a different way, the breathing. So again, try to search it. Uh, with this one, because the lips are so open, uh, try to see if you can uh, uh, project your voice through it. the dynamic <laughs> low volume and then if you then play normal loudness it's so loud it has a big impact and I'm not even playing loud so if I play loud It's just like uh, pushing, you know, using this, getting the lippers, lips to move bigger. Um, but the soft, like smooth playing is, is tricky. You really have to put some time in it. Um, so this is my tutorial for now. Yeah, also if you uh, have an instrument, see if there's cracks or uh, holes in it uh, because then it won't play nicely. This uh, often with uh, instruments that are painted, the paints uh, might cover a crack or a hole and you can uh, check this out by just feeling and uh, what I do is uh, I might uh, close the bell completely with my belly and then somebody else blows on it and if air escapes only at the belly, fine. If it uh, <laughs> you lose, this, lose air pressure somewhere else, there's holes in it. Also, a didgeridoo, um, it needs to fit your body, uh, like with back pressure, uh, with the tone, with the feeling, uh, it needs to resonate with you. It's uh, finding your uh, new best friend. Um, so an instrument might be super nice, but you know, you don't really have chemistry with it. So find your instrument, find your chemistry. Thank you very much. Uh, keep subscribing, liking, sharing, and sending love and light your way, my beautiful brothers and sisters.